Welcome back. I'm uh, doing a little conversation here with uh, Philip Taylor, and he's published a book, and it's called No More Dancing Chickens. And it, it's kind of, a, to me, that's a tongue-in-cheek title for this book. And it, it, it kind of leads you, it's, it's almost like a conversation piece of, and I did to you. I wanted to know where the, where the title for the book. You've got to explain the title of the book so people out there will <laughs> connect why you wrote the book. Absolutely. Well, I, I had a, a personal conversation with a friend of mine about the title mm -hmm. that helped us select it. But uh, many years ago, uh, local fairs established kind of a sideshow of dancing chickens. And basically what they would do is put chickens on a stage, uh, place a heating element under the stage, and uh, with the attempt to get the chickens to kind of dance around a little bit. And it kind of became a, a major attraction <laughs> there for the local <laughs> fairs. And so uh, the analogy behind that yeah. is... Uh, that we're using that to describe a lot of what we're seeing happen to a lot of young families, just great people mm -hmm. that the culture just keeps cranking up the heat. And yeah. with that yeah. comes a lot of pressure, yeah. a lot of expectation. We're not really sure where to go with all that, how to sort that out. Yeah. So you, you uh, compiled all this and you put it into a book form. That is correct, and yeah. I compiled it as much through our own life experience with my family and my wife of 20 years and two teenage children as mm -hmm. I did uh, gathering information and having experiences with people in church settings and the local school, uh, spent some time in the mental health field as well, mm -hmm. and so all of that kind of culminated into uh, this book project. Yeah, so, so what's the purpose of the book for the reader? What, what, where, we're going to start and where are they going to end? Well, I'll draw off the subtitle of the book. It's Empowering Families to Stay Connected in a Disconnected World. It's amazing that at the click of a button, we can FaceTime or text somebody around the world in just a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. But I believe that, that we have become one of the most relationally disconnected generations that's been on the planet. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say relationally, is that, is that within your family or is it with our immediate families or communities or all those above? I focus primarily on our marriage relationship and on our relationship that we have with children and with children primarily still in the home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you, you know, you gave that analogy of the chicken. I, I wonder if that same uh, thing was available for this generation to watch. Would they even take second note of, the, uh, of what happened to a chicken? Would they even be concerned? Is that a direct relation to the kind of society we live under now? I, I believe it is. I believe it is. And you know, uh, another analogy, I don't share this particular analogy in the book, but we just had the local fair here in our area. Yeah. And one of my son's favorite rides is the Gravitron. And it's that ride, it's a circular, it goes in a circular motion. Yeah. And it, it, it just basically draws off of centrifugal force. Keeps you stuck to the wall. Keeps you stuck to the wall. Yeah. And so the faster the machine goes the more things are thrown to the outside. Mm -hmm. And so I know with, with our experience in our family and with the experiences of the families that I've had the privilege of working with through the years, that that ride, so to speak, has become our life experience. And life can spin so quickly that we reach a point where uh, we see, you know what, my marriage is way over there. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to take some steps toward it mm -hmm. and reconnect here in a way that I know yeah. that I need to. Yeah. How in the world do I do that? And then we say, well, that's the heart of my son or that's the heart of my daughter over there. I know they're struggling. I want to get closer to them, but this thing feels like it's yeah. spinning out of control. Mm -hmm. And we get to a point, Dan, where we just want to throw up our hands and say, can somebody please just unplug the ride for me? Right. Just for a few minutes. Well, it's just like our cell phones. I, some, I'm, I'm, I get to the point where I'm, I'm, I've got three or four conversations going on at once, you know, with this <laughs> yes. uh, whatever. Yes. And I just want to just throw it. Yes. Because I, I, I'm, I want off the ride. I yes. want it. I want life to be slow and, and where I can assimilate and soak in the moment. Yes. And we can't. That's exactly right, and, and that is really the heart and soul behind this book. How do we take steps as husbands, as wives, as parents? Um, how do we take steps toward the most important relationships that we have on earth that keep being thrown out to the outside with everything else that's going on in our life? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, are, what are some of the things that you can give us that are in the book that would help us to achieve that? Absolutely. Chapter 3 is, is the power of connecting excuse me, the power of connection. 
And really, Dan, that, that chapter, I really wanted to move away from theory and into just the practicality of what this can look like in daily life. So, for, for instance, um, one of the things mentioned in the book is to challenge uh, couples who are married to find moments each and every day where they shut off the cell phones, maybe mm-hmm. they even lock themselves in their room away mm-hmm. from their kids, mm-hmm. turn off the television, shut out every distraction possible and be able to engage all of their senses on one another, even if it's just for a few minutes a day. Mm-hmm. And, and again, this is, this is some, some trial and error as well that's, that's at work in this with yeah. my wife and I and what we're trying to mm-hmm. experience and bring to the table for, for vision for our family. But that's just one idea, but you think about how difficult that is. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the text messages. How hard is it to actually uh, discipline ourselves to shut our phone off long enough to have a meaningful conversation? Or, yeah, in the old days, I used to I used to I used to watch television. Now I've, I've either got the laptop in front of me and I listen to the TV while I'm doing this, and it's <laughs> it's it's a multi thing going on. And I may even have a text. You know, it's just really. Um, but it's it's uh, you. It's in me. I have to do that. It's because I'm answering questions or yes. scheduling the next day or whatever. Yes. But I would love to go back where you don't have that at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you say you need to connect with your your spouse once a day where there's no external stimuli. That is correct. And you need to do it for a short period of time. Is I, it is it a stare down or <laughs> what is it? <laughs> sometimes it's a stare down, but sometimes we go for so for so uh, for so many days, sometimes even weeks, yeah. sometimes even months before we have those heart to heart connections with mm-hmm. our spouse. And by the time the silence comes, yeah. the kids aren't in the room and the phone is shut off. Mm-hmm. We don't know what to say. Yeah. And we're let me, let me other text you. Like, what a Who are you <laughs> again? <laughs> so I'm going to say start with wherever you possibly can. Yeah. So it's a, a decompression. It, of, it really is. Yeah. It is a decompression of the ways that life just absolutely places layers of stress upon us. And it's an opportunity for us to kind of um, remove some of that and focus on the heart mm-hmm. of the people we love yeah. most. Well, I, I went through your book, and I, I, I appreciate your publishers for sending me an e, the, the e-book that I, I went through. I haven't totally read it, but I did look at, at the chapters and some of the subheadings, and uh, it's pretty extensive, mm-hmm. and, it, and it tackles a lot of problems that uh, you have answers in here instead of just theory, mm-hmm. which, which I liked quite a bit. Uh, I want to I wanna put this out there and, and give people an opportunity to, to maybe check this out. Where, the, where can they? Absolutely. Um, Dan, the book can be found at most all of your online distributors. Amazon.com uh, is, a, is a very popular one. Uh, BarnesandNoble.com, BooksAmillion.com. Uh, those would be the places that I would direct mm-hmm. people. Uh, if they want to do a bulk order, an order of, uh, say, 20 books or more, they could reach... Which would be good for church organizations, Yeah, right? church organizations, groups of people. Uh, they could go directly to our publishing company, which is Fivefold Media, and they could go... It's the number five, so fivefoldmedia.com is where they could go to place those orders. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, even though there are scriptures in here that are, that are pointed to, to for guidance and direction and examples... Uh, it doesn't have to be a faith-based book. There's a lot of practical solutions in here for anybody. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate Absolutely. you. Appreciate uh, you being here, Philip. Uh, your coach here, new coach. Tell us a little bit about that before you get out of here. You know, I grew up as a mountain home bomber, and so what a privilege, uh, Dan, to be able to come back home here. Mm-hmm. It's it's ironic uh, to be able to work alongside some of the people who used to be. Uh, my teachers and my coaches, mm-hmm. but what a privilege it is to work with them. Great people and an honor to be at Mountain Home Junior High. Well, good, good. Well, I'm sure they're glad you're here and maybe you can uh, have a few wins under your belt. <laughs> We'd like to have those. Here. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Philip, for being here and uh, good luck with the book. Again, the book is called No More Dancing Chickens and I highly recommend it from uh, what I've looked at and I hope you pick it up somewhere too. We're going to be back in just a few minutes and Debbie Womack is here to talk about the uh, Kindness Incorporated pig roast, and we'll find out all about that in just a few minutes. Stay with us.